What is up my friends? Welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at the double basses, which is the lowest string section of the orchestra. We're going to talk about the overview of them. We're going to talk about some pros and cons of using them and also how I personally like to use them in my own mockups and productions. So before we get into that, I want to give you my 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound guide. It's a totally free guide that goes over 10 concepts that you need to know in order to make your mockups actually sound good and uh, co you know, competitive in terms of the a demo market and, and creating mockups that actually stand out. So if you internalize these, I guarantee you that your sound will just leap forward. And I want to give that to you as a gift for watching this video. So if you click the first link in the box below, it'll take you straight there where you can download it right away. Anyway, let's talk about the double basses here. So basically the open strings start on E0, then they go up in fourths. So E, A, D, and G. It's actually tuned in fourths compared to fifths for the other higher string instruments. Overall, the double basses have a dull and dark sound, which means it can't usually cut through too much in a mix, but that's actually a good thing because we actually want them to provide a more harmonic foundation where it doesn't need to cut through too much. It just provides the bass function, right? So it functions well as the foundation of the orchestra, usually providing root notes or bass notes that could be like inverted or anything like that. Also, it frequently doubles the celli an octave below to give it more low end support. That's a very common thing to do too. And in terms of the vocal register, it assumes the role of the bass, the lower male voice, usually the lowest one. There's also like baritone and, and tenor, but usually the bass and the baritone ranges are where the basses, I would say, excel. Also, in terms of the functions, I like to use them for pads and foundational roles. We already kind of touched on that, but generally that's why you would use the double basses. So what are some pros and cons to using them? Number one is the harmonic foundation of the orchestra, right? So they're very essential to establishing the bass notes at all times, because usually the bass note is the one that's going to be telling us what the chord above is. You know, when we when we analyze chords, we always look at what the bottom note is, then what's on, on the top of that, and we kind of combine that to see how those notes fit together to create a chord. So the basses play a very important role in that in that uh, in that way, right? Also, their large and gritty tone enables them to support uh, action sequences or moments of high tension easily, right? So they can play short notes, they could do pizzicato, they can play, you know, articulations that really s spice up the, the scene or that piece of music, right? They're, they're very versatile in that way. However, their higher range isn't as resonant as the celli, so they're used less for soaring melodies, and I would say they're less agile than, you know, violas and violins as well. So technically, you're not really going to hear too many runs um, with basses because they can really cloud up the arrangement pretty easily. The lower you go, the easier it is to kind of cloud up the arrangement. Also, writing too many parts for the basses at one time can lead to muddy results, as we just said. Thinking about the harmonic series, it's very important to keep it clear. Um, you know, the higher you go, the, the closer together the notes can be. But when you go lower, you want to space them apart more. So octaves, then fifths, and then, you know, thirds and stuff as you go higher. So what are my favorite ways to use the basses? Number one, to establish the harmonic foundation. That's always my number one. I'm always going to use the basses if my low end is not enough and I need some extra glue at the bottom to make it feel balanced. Also, I like to remove the double basses in moments of lightness and intimacy to give it a, a different flavor, right? And then when they come back in, then we feel supported. We feel the foundation of the orchestra, which is very important. But to start out, uh, you know, when you when you write with the other strings, see how it sounds without the basses first, and then when you bring them in, you'll you'll appreciate them even more. Also, to play pizzicato, I love to use basses here for lighter and more comedic moments. Maybe it's in like in like a in like a Mario game, um, in a in a lighter setting or animation. Uh, pizzicato is very very common to incite moments of like happiness and, and fun, right? And yeah, and finally, just to add low end warmth, warmth and fullness uh, when it's lacking in the arrangement currently. So very standard ways to use the basses in my opinion. Uh, I don't really like to use too many extended techniques, but that's just me personally. If you do, um, you can certainly do that. Find a sample library that does that and you might find it very useful for your purposes as well. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what the bases kind of do and an, and an overview and how I like to use them. Let me know in a comment below if you like to use the double bases in your own music and how you like to use them. I would love to know. And also before you go, I want to give you again my 10 steps to a clear orchestral sound. It really is my personal way 
of knowing that my mockups sound good and clean and full. So if you go through and internalize all these 10 things, make sure you are you know fully wrapping your head around every single thing then i think you're pretty much guaranteed to have a good result there so again it's totally free if you want to click the first link in the box below it'll take you straight there um and yeah thank you so much i'll catch you in tomorrow's video and i'll see you then bye, -bye.